Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the 10 most dangerous hacking gadgets in 2024. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro, fast. Before we jump in, let's define what we mean by hacking gadgets. These aren't your everyday tech toys. Hacking gadgets are specifically designed to exploit vulnerabilities in computer systems and networks, often for malicious purposes. While they can be used by security professionals to test and improve defenses in the wrong hands, they can lead to unauthorized access, data breaches, financial loss, and even compromise personal safety. The first super cool hacking gadget that you can try is the Flipper Tool. The Flipper Zero is a unique and versatile device that has gained popularity within the hacking and security communities. While it can be misused for malicious purposes, its core functionality lies in ethical hacking, penetration testing, and exploring various hardware and software functionalities. Flipper Zero is a portable, multifunctional device with a playful Tamagotchi-like appearance. Don't let the cute design fool you. It packs a punch in terms of capabilities. It features various functionalities like decoding various communication protocols like RFID, NFC, and infrared emulating RFID tags and key fobs for access control systems, brute forcing simple locks with specific mechanisms, sniffing out nearby wireless networks, acting as a universal remote control for certain devices, flashing firmware onto compatible hardware, debugging and fuzzing hardware for vulnerabilities. The Flipper tool comes with a number of benefits. Flipper Zero offers a wide range of functionalities in a single device, making it ideal for exploring different aspects of hardware and software interaction. It comes with an open source platform. The open source nature of Flipper Zero allows for continuous development and expansion of its capabilities by the community. Developers can create custom applications and functionalities to further enhance its usefulness. Flipper Zero can be a valuable tool for learning about hardware hacking, radio protocols, and security concepts. It provides a safe and controlled environment to experiment and gain practical experience. Who uses Flipper Zero? Ethical hackers and penetration testers, they use Flipper Zero to test the security of physical access control systems, RFID readers, and wireless networks. Hardware enthusiasts and makers, they use Flipper Zero to explore hardware communication protocols, experiment with firmware flashing, and create custom applications. Security researchers, they use Flipper Zero to research vulnerabilities in hardware and software systems and develop better security solutions. Despite having a cool range of features, there can be drawbacks of using the Flipper tool. While Flipper Zero offers various functionalities, using it effectively often requires some technical knowledge and understanding of the underlying concepts. Flipper Zero might not be effective against highly secure systems with advanced encryption or complex authentication mechanisms. The next gadget in the line is USB Rubber Ducky. The USB Rubber Ducky is a seemingly harmless USB flash drive that packs a deceptive punch. The Rubber Ducky looks exactly like a standard USB flash drive. This unassuming appearance allows attackers to exploit physical access to a computer and deploy their malicious code without raising suspicion. The magic lies within. Unlike a regular flash drive, the Rubber Ducky is a programmable keyboard. It doesn't store files, it stores a sequence of keystrokes. When plugged into a computer, the Rubber Ducky automatically acts like a keyboard and types out the pre-programmed sequence at superhuman speeds, often bypassing detection by the user. The USB Rubber Ducky, while often associated with malicious attacks, can be a valuable tool for ethical hackers in penetration testing and security assessments. Ethical hackers can use it in various ways. Ethical hackers can program the Rubber Ducky to simulate brute force attacks on login screens. This helps assess the strength of password policies and identify potential weaknesses in login procedures. They can also test for weaknesses like bypassing multi-factor authentication, MFA, prompts that rely solely on user input through the keyboard. Further, Rubber Ducky can be used to create realistic phishing simulations. By automatically typing out malicious website addresses or opening infected attachments, 
ethical hackers can evaluate user awareness and identify areas where employees might be susceptible to phishing scams. Ethical hackers can design rubber ducky payloads to test the security of web applications. This might involve injecting specific keystroke sequences that exploit vulnerabilities in application forms or data entry fields. During penetration testing, certain tasks might involve entering repetitive commands or configurations. The rubber ducky can automate these tasks, saving time and ensuring consistency during the testing process. There are some drawbacks to consider when using a USB rubber ducky for ethical hacking, even though it offers valuable functionalities for penetration testing like limited scope and potential for mistakes, user awareness concerns, and the technical expertise required. The next in the line is Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a series of single-board computers SBCs, developed in the UK to promote the teaching of basic computer science in schools. The Raspberry Pi, with its affordability, versatility, and open-source nature, makes it a popular choice for ethical hackers to learn about penetration testing and security vulnerabilities. The Raspberry Pi provides a safe and controlled environment to experiment with hacking techniques and tools without harming real systems. Ethical hackers can learn about network security, exploit vulnerabilities in simulated scenarios, and test their skills without risk. It utilizes open source operating systems like Kali Linux, a popular platform preloaded with various hacking tools. This allows ethical hackers to explore these tools, understand their functionalities, and learn ethical hacking methodologies. The small size and low power consumption of the Raspberry Pi make it a highly portable penetration testing tool. Ethical hackers can carry it to client sites and perform on-site security assessments. With Wi-Fi capabilities, the Raspberry Pi can be used to simulate various wireless attacks like war driving, access point impersonation, and even password cracking, depending on encryption strength. This helps identify weaknesses in wireless networks and recommend improvements. By setting up the Raspberry Pi as a packet sniffer, ethical hackers can capture network traffic and analyze data packets flowing through the network. This can reveal potential security issues like unencrypted data transmission or suspicious network activity. While the Raspberry Pi offers a portable and affordable platform for ethical hackers to learn and practice penetration testing techniques in a controlled environment, its drawbacks include limited processing power for complex tasks, the potential for misuse by attackers due to affordability and open source nature, and the need for additional knowledge and training to effectively utilize it for ethical hacking purposes. The fourth most dangerous hacking gadget in the line is a Wi-Fi adopter. A Wi-Fi adapter, also known as a wireless network adapter, is a hardware device that allows a computer or other electronic device to connect to a wireless network. It acts as a translator between your device and the Wi-Fi signal broadcasted by a router or another access point. Wi-Fi adapters, while primarily used for everyday internet access, can be valuable tools for ethical hackers when employed strategically during penetration testing or security assessments. Ethical hackers can use various Wi-Fi adapters adapters with different specifications, antenna types, supported frequencies, to test a network's compatibility with diverse devices. This helps identify potential connection issues or vulnerabilities specific to certain configurations. Ethical hackers can use Wi-Fi adapters to simulate different types of wireless attacks, like unauthorized access attempts or deauthentication attacks. This helps test the effectiveness of a network's WIDs in detecting and responding to such threats. In controlled environments and with proper authorization, Authorization. Ethical hackers can use Wi-Fi adapters in conjunction with specialized software to capture network traffic, packet sniffing. This allows them to analyze data packets flowing through the network and potentially identify security weaknesses like unencrypted data transmission. Important note, packet sniffing on unauthorized networks is illegal and unethical. For advanced penetration testing scenarios, ethical hackers might utilize specific Wi-Fi adapters compatible with tools that exploit vulnerabilities in wireless protocols or network configurations. However, this requires in-depth knowledge and responsible use to avoid causing harm. While Wi-Fi adapters offer flexibility for ethical hackers to assess wireless network security through compatibility testing, signal strength analysis, and wireless intrusion detection system testing in controlled environments, drawbacks include limited functionality for advanced techniques, relying on additional tools and expertise, and the potential for misuse on unauthorized 
computerized networks requiring strict adherence to ethical hacking guidelines and obtaining proper authorization to avoid legal repercussions. The fifth one on the list that I have picked up is the Wi-Fi Pineapple. It is a portable device designed to look like a harmless pineapple, though some models look more like black boxes with spikes. However, beneath its fruity facade lies a powerful tool that can be used for both ethical and malicious purposes. The Wi-Fi Pineapple acts as a rogue access point, Evil Twin. It creates a fake Wi-Fi network that appears legitimate, often mimicking the name of an existing network. When unsuspecting users connect to the fake network, the Wi-Fi Pineapple can potentially intercept unencrypted traffic, launch man-in-the-middle attacks, and disrupt network activity. Ethical hackers can use it as penetration testers can use the Wi-Fi Pineapple in controlled environments to assess the security of Wi-Fi networks, identify vulnerabilities, and test security measures. Limited effectiveness, strong Wi-Fi encryption, WPA2 or WPA3, significantly reduces the Wi-Fi Pineapple's usefulness for malicious attacks. Technical know-how needed. Using the Wi-Fi Pineapple effectively, for good or bad, requires a technical understanding of Wi-Fi networks and hacking techniques. The sixth one is Ubertooth. The Ubertooth One is an open-source hardware device designed for exploring and experimenting with the world of Bluetooth technology. While it can be misused for malicious purposes, its core functionality lies in ethical hacking, penetration testing, and understanding Bluetooth communication protocols. The Ubertooth acts as a powerful Bluetooth receiver with some transmission capabilities. Unlike a standard Bluetooth adapter, it goes beyond simple connectivity. Ethical hackers can use Ubertooth to dive deeper into the inner workings of Bluetooth communication. By decoding various protocols, they gain a better understanding of how data is transmitted and secured within the Bluetooth ecosystem. The open source nature of Ubertooth allows ethical hackers with strong programming skills to develop custom tools and scripts specifically designed to analyze Bluetooth traffic and identify vulnerabilities. This can be valuable for identifying new threats and improving overall Bluetooth security. While Ubertooth offers a valuable platform for ethical hackers to learn about Bluetooth protocols, experiment in controlled environments, and even contribute to security research, drawbacks include the need for technical knowledge and limited effectiveness against strongly encrypted connections. The seventh hacking tool on the list is HackRF1. The HackRF1 is a popular and versatile software-defined radio, SDR, peripheral. An SDR is essentially a programmable radio transceiver that can be used for various purposes depending on the software you use with it. The HackRF1 can both transmit and receive radio signals across a wide frequency range, typically from 1 MHz to 6 GHz depending on the model. This covers a large portion of the radio spectrum used for various applications like cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, FM radio, and more. Unlike traditional radios that are locked to specific frequencies and protocols, the Hack RF1 is software defined. This means the software you use with it determines how it functions. Ethical hackers can use the Hack RF1 to capture and analyze data packets transmitted using various wireless protocols. By understanding how these protocols work, they can identify potential weaknesses in their design or implementation that could be exploited for malicious purposes. This knowledge helps them develop better defenses. The Hack RF1 allows ethical hackers to capture and analyze radio traffic across different frequencies. This can reveal valuable information about the types of communication occurring on a network, potential vulnerabilities in data transmission methods, and even identify unauthorized devices operating in the vicinity. While the HackRF1 offers a powerful and versatile software-defined radio platform for ethical hackers to analyze radio traffic, simulate attacks, explore protocols, and contribute to security research, drawbacks include the need for technical knowledge to use it effectively. The next hacking tool is Bus Pirate. The Bus Pirate is an open source hardware tool designed for debugging, programming, and analyzing microcontrollers and other integrated circuits (ICs). The Bus Pirate offers a valuable toolkit for ethical hackers due to its ability to interact with electronic components at a deeper level. In a controlled lab setting with explicit permission, the Bus Pirate can be used to simulate real-world attack scenarios on embedded systems. By analyzing communication protocols and 
interacting with hardware components, the Bus Pirate can be used in controlled penetration testing scenarios to assess the security of embedded systems. While the Bus Pirate empowers exploration and analysis of electronics, limitations include the need for technical knowledge, potential ineffectiveness against heavily secured systems, and the requirement for ethical use and proper authorization for security testing. The ninth hacking tool on the list is Packet Squirrel. The Packet Squirrel is a pocket-sized man-in-the-middle Ethernet multi-tool designed by HAK5, a company known for security research and training tools. The Packet Squirrel can be discreetly plugged into an Ethernet cable, allowing it to act as a bridge between two network segments. This enables the device to capture all network traffic flowing through it, essentially making it a man-in-the-middle. The Packet Squirrel features different modes selectable through a switch. These modes offer various functionalities, such as packet sniffing, remote access VPN and transparent network bridge. Ethical hackers can use the packet squirrel to assess the security of a network by capturing traffic and identifying potential vulnerabilities, such as weak encryption or unauthenticated protocols. In controlled penetration testing scenarios, the packet squirrel can be used to simulate MITM attacks, test network security controls, and identify exploitable weaknesses. Packet squirrel's ability to capture and analyze network traffic can be valuable for security researchers who study network protocols and develop new security tools tools and techniques. The last and the tenth most dangerous hacking tool is Bash Bunny. Bash Bunny is a powerful USB attack and automation platform created by HAK5, a company known for security research and training tools. It looks like a chunky USB flash drive, but don't be fooled by its appearance. Bash Bunny can mimic various USB devices like keyboards, network cards, and storage drives. This allows it to interact with a computer and potentially bypass security measures designed for standard USB devices. Simple keylogger, Bash Bunny is programmable. You can write scripts to automate complex attacks sequences including keystroke injection, network attacks, and data exfiltration. Ethical hackers can use Bash Bunny to test the effectiveness of basic security measures like USB auto run limitations. This helps identify weaknesses and areas where stronger controls might be necessary. Bash Bunny's ability to combine keyboard injection, network attacks with limitations, and data exfiltration allows ethical hackers to test the effectiveness of security controls against more complex attack scenarios. While Bash Bunny offers versatile attack simulations, its effectiveness is limited by reliance on physical physical access, potential for security measure bypass limitations. And as a special bonus, we are also featuring Proxmark 3. The Proxmark 3 is a versatile, multi-purpose hardware tool designed for radio frequency identification, RFID security analysis, research, and development. The Proxmark 3 has an antenna for transmitting and receiving radio waves at specific frequencies used by RFID systems, typically low frequency or high frequency. It has a microcontroller that handles user input and controls the overall operation. Additionally, a field programmable gate array, FPGA, provides high-performance processing capabilities for handling complex radio signals and communication protocols. The Proxmark 3 operates with custom firmware that allows users to choose functionalities like reading tags, emulating tags, or brute forcing access. Ethical hackers can use the Proxmark 3 to analyze the communication between RFID tags and readers. This can help identify weaknesses in the protocols used, potential flaws in reader implementations, or vulnerabilities in access control mechanisms that rely on RFID technology. In controlled lab settings with proper authorization, the Proxmark 3 can be used to simulate real-world attacks on RFID systems. This allows ethical hackers to test the effectiveness of existing security measures and identify areas where improvements can be made. While the Proxmark 3 offers extensive RFID exploration, its effectiveness is limited by the need for technical knowledge, potential counter-security measures in RFID systems. That's it for today's video. I have explained the 10 most dangerous hacking gadgets in 2024. Let me know in the comments about this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.